Hey, let's look at how this new smart thermostat system works. Here's a diagram of the code and the hardware. There's a main Python program that calls this thermo controller, and this is where the sort of brains are. And there's this piece, anticipatory shutoff, that helps turn the heat off at the right time. And then there's a button controller and something for the sensor, the timing knob, the heater relay that goes to the HVAC system, and then the display on the Circuit Playground Express. We're going to look at these parts. Here's a spreadsheet and a graph in it that shows the um, operation of this thing over some hours, about 14 hours, I think. And the red triangles are when the heat came on and the blue ones are when it turned off. And with the way it was adjusted recently, it has the temperature range over about, what would you say, a degree and a quarter Celsius. Um, but with the, with the knob, you can have it stay closer to the target temperature. It's just a little less efficient that way. Um, so what are we seeing? The, the blue is the current temperature, the measured temperature, I should say, which may lag behind a little bit. I don't know how quick the thermometer, the temperature sensor operates. And then the green is where I've set the temperature I want, and it defaults to 21 degrees Celsius. And you can see that after some time, I lowered it by three-tenths of a degree. So now you see it's... It's um, lowered. Then I said, up, oh, I want it to be a little warmer, so up we go. And then it was here. And then this was overnight last night. And then I think when I got up, I said, hey, let's cool it down. So I brought it down a little bit, and it followed. And then I said, way down. And then it, over some time it did, and then back up a bit. So that's um, a look at the operation of the thing. Okay, back to the picture. Let's um, go through the code. Let's start at the main Python module. Here it is. I've organized the code so that the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express code is all in one package. I think I'm going to make a Raspberry Pi implementation of this that uses Wi-Fi and can be controlled um, with a smartphone. Um, so that's how this is organized. This, all the Circuit Playground Express specific code is in this package with the exception of these lines here in the main um, module. And my plan is that for the Raspberry Pi version, there will be Raspberry Pi versions uh, of all these modules. Um, these, are, these are part of the application. Okay, so we will work in units of one-tenth of one degree Celsius. And the default desired temperature is 21C. And when you hold down the buttons to request the temperature go up or down, the buttons repeat after three-tenths of a second. And this code creates a button object from the buttons class. And then this registers a change listener so that when a button is pushed, we call the thermo controller and tell it to change the desired temperature. And then this is this says which button is it, and then we either um, change the temperature by positive temp change increment or negative temp change increment. And we create the display, and the display, as you've seen in the video before this, um, is the lights on the Circuit Playground Express that tell you how the measured temperature differs from the desired temperature. Um, that creates a display. Then we create the thermo controller, and it needs the it needs a sensor, the timing knob, the heater relay, the display, and the default desired temperature. Let's just jump back to this. So the thermo controller has uh, references to these objects, and it um, controls them. And here's the main loop for the program. It's just a forever loop. It calls update functions, update methods on the th on three parts, the, the 
thermal controller and the buttons on the display. So we'll look in detail about the thermo controller, but for buttons update, that just says, hey, check and see if a button's pushed and um, call me back if it has been through this change listener here, this inline function. Um, okay, so where's the next logical place to look? Why don't we look at buttons next? Okay, so the buttons class works with by reading the Circuit Playground Express buttons. Here it is. It's fairly simple and it works for things beyond just this application. And it just, um, well, let's take a look. So it saves some things. It creates the button objects with the Adafruit classes and sets them up and then creates this empty array of listeners. And then when the listeners register, their um, function gets added to this listener so that we can call them back. And then the update function gets called rapidly. And we look and see what time it is now. And if it's time to check and see if the button is pressed, then we look at both buttons. And if the button is pressed, then we set the time for the next button check and we notify the listeners that this button has been pressed. Okay, so that's buttons. Why don't we look at uh, display now? And this, with the lights, displays the difference between the measured and the desired temperatures on the light emitting diodes of the Circuit Playground Express. They're, they're called NeoPixels. Um, this is a little bit complicated because it rotates around the circle of lights clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on whether it's too warm or too cold. And it also has code in here that um, switches to one degree resolution rather than one tenth. Um, so I think maybe I won't try to go into this in detail. Um, what's next? Maybe the sensor, because that's what we use to find out what the temperature is. It also measures the humidity, but we're not using that right now. Sensor is here. And this is pretty simple. So when we instantiate this, we create, we use an Adafruit library to manage it. We just give it the pin number, and then we save this reference to this Adafruit object. And then when we're called to read the current value, we have a loop because it's possible to have an error or to get a weird value. So we keep looping until we get no error and have reasonable values. So this is getting the temperature, that's getting the humidity, this is that reasonableness check, and when things are good, we return those two. Um, otherwise, we keep on looping, and if we have a failure, a runtime error, then we ignore it. Okay, that's the sensor. Why don't we look at the timing knob? This is a potentiometer, um, a variable relay, uh, sorry, a variable resistor that you use to control, um, to try and get the heat to shut off soon, um, sooner than it normally would in order to avoid the temperature rising really high. Um, as I explained in the other video, you can turn off the relay to the HVAC system, but since the thing is basically burning a fire and it's got all this heat in it, it's got to keep the fan running until that heat is dissipated. And who knows how long that's going to take. So um, we're kind of guessing um, using the timing knob and some other things. Um, so this is using Adafruit's analog in class from the analog I.O. module. And we just give it the pin that we're connected on. And then we have this method value between. And these numbers are come, they're just a, uh, let's see, is it a 32-bit 
unsigned integer. What's well, two to the thirty second? Let's try this. Two to the thirty second. Now sixteen bit. It's a sixteen bit unsigned integer with values ranging from zero to sixty five five thirty five. And those aren't terribly useful, so we want to map them to, the, to between the low and high value. And that's what this does. It takes the knob value, divides it by the maximum value, which gives a number between 0 and 1. Then we multiply that by the range we want, and then we add the, the low value. OK, what's next? The heater relay. Okay, this uses more Adafruit code, the digital I.O. module, and this is an output operation. So you set a value of true or false to activate the relay or not. And with the value of false, it turns on the relay. So when we say enable it, with this Boolean here set to true, we have to negate that because to enable the relay, we need to be the opposite of true, which is false. Okay, we talked about the buttons, the sensor, timing knob, heater relay, display. The Let's look at the anticipatory shutoff. Um, we have this idea of a suppression period. So the suppression period is set to some point in time after the relay is turned on. And that's adjustable. The start of the suppression period is based on that potentiometer value. And we make it between 30 seconds and 10 minutes. So you dial in the knob, the point at which you want the heat to shut off in order to limit the, um, the range of temperatures that you get over time. So the function just says whether you're beyond the suppression period so that things can be reset, or, and then another one, whether you're in the suppression period. I think the last part is the thermocontroller. This is probably the biggest module. That's 63 lines. Um, so let's take a look here. Let me close this. Here are the, here are the functions. There are not that many functions. There's the init function uh, method, I should say, and then update, which gets called frequently, and then change desired temp to change the desired temperature. So let's start with the init. And it gets passed in all these objects for these lower level things, all these things. And here we just save a copy of them inside fields in the object. And we make a note of what time it is now so that we know when to read the temperature next. This is for change listeners. Um, OK, so then let's look at update. Here's update, and it says, what time is it now? Is it time to read the temperature? And if it is, then we call manage the temperature, and we set the next time to read the temperature. So um, we'll come back to manage temperature. Let's look at change desired temperature. This it, um, takes an amount, and we just add the amount to the desired temperature, and we set the next read time to now so that it will be, so that we'll do that immediately. And then we set a flag to indicate that we've um, changed the desired temperature. And where that's used is so that we're not seeing these green desired uh, points spread all the way across. They're, they only show when they're changed. So that's why um, that flag is set here. OK. Let's go back to update, and here we have manage temperature. So let's look at manage temperature. 
And maybe I'll just give the highlights of this. Uh, here's where we read from the temperature sensor and we get the current temperature. And then we look at the um, desired temperature. From that, we subtract the current temperature, which gives us the degrees of heat needed to bring us up to the desired temperature. And then we determine whether the heater should be on and whether the heater state is changing. So it could be the heater's already on and we don't have to do anything, um, or the heater is not on and we need to turn it on. Um, here, if the state is changing, then we call change heater state. And here, for various reasons, we will log the state so that it appears here. And then we'll update the display. So if various things happen, then we do those two things. Okay, um, let's look at change heater state. That's here. It needs to know whether the heater should be on and the degrees of heat needed. And if the heater should be on, then we turn on a flag uh, that it is on. Uh, it's going to be in a minute. And then we use the anticipatory shutoff object to create this um, suppression period. If the heater shouldn't be on, then we set this flag to false. Then we call uh, the heater enable, and we either turn it on or off. All right, what else in here? Just scrolling up. Okay, I think that's all I want to say about that. And here's the diagram again. You push buttons to say what temperature you want. This thing reads the temperature. This is used to try to avoid these wide fluctuations in temperature as the heater comes on and off. This is the relay that takes a small um, five volt signal from the CPX and turns it into, well, it basically connects these two terminals on the HVAC system. And I think these are 24 volts. Um, and then the Circuit Playground Express lights show what's going on. Okay, look for the code in the notes. See you next time.